What's good? We back once again. It's the boxing clinic. You know, keeping it moving, and um, you know, nighttime grind, and we still talking boxing after a slow day yesterday. Um, but you know, it comes down to um, you know, more news coming in. You know, we're gonna try to keep it flowing. And it seems like uh, Earl Spence has two opponents potentially for December Jan- or January, uh, December 17, January 18. And uh, the one of the opponents we talked about, uh, I think it was, what, Thursday, Luis Colazo apparently injuring himself. He was, had been long rumored to two fights. First fight was supposed to be versus Devin Alexander on a Mikey and Adrian undercard, which was slashed. Now Alexander is taking on Walter Castillo in his return since his pain killer addiction and moving to Palm Beach, Florida. With his his coach Kevin Cunningham, and um, you know now Colazzo was injured. He was supposed to be the October November regular Fox date for um, Earl Spence. All of a sudden he comes up injured. Now um, now if it's January, see he had an arm injury. If it's January, it's probably more likely going to be Luis Colazzo. He probably recovered. He's ranked like fourth in the uh, in the IBF. Um, so that's why he's really being considered because Carlos Uncampo and uh, Constantine Pullmop is fighting for the uh, mandatory bout with Earl Spence. Now, now Lamont Peterson enters the situation, and this is a great fight. I'm going to tell you why. This is, a, this is either a better fight for Earl Spence than, any, than the Danny Garcia fight, than the Sean Porter fight, then this is a better fight. Even though if he be even, I mean, I don't know. As far as if he be Sean or Dan, or Sean Porter to be exact, will he be the mandatory to Keith Thurman's belt that way? I don't think so because Earl Spence didn't enter the voluntary Vada drug testing, and I think he won't enter unless he has a Keith Thurman date on lock fight on lock. Then when he has to fight for the WBC title, he enter Vada. Um, but if he fights Lamont Peterson. My Peterson is the mandatory to Keith Thurman as well. He hosts a regular WBA title. Keith hosts the Super WBA title. And Earl Spence can finesse his way to being Keith Thurman's mandatory and put himself in a better position by beating Lamont Peterson. Lamont Peterson can sweeten, sweeten the deal become, by becoming another a two-time IBF champion, one time at 140 and one time at 147, and, um, you know, have some leverage and be able to fight on. He said he only wanted to fight three more times. And, um... Actually, he said four, but David Alvarez was the fourth time. Um, you know, this is a guy that talked about his fighting as high as uh, middleweight just to get a fight. So, um, hopefully, he takes the fight. It'll be a great fight. Um, even though I think he'll get walked through by Earl Spence, he's just too small, too weak. He don't have the punching power to fuck with Earl Spence, but he does have some boxing ability. We've seen it versus Danny Garcia, but Earl Spence is a Danny Garcia. Um, you know, he's one of the better body punchers, um, but his style just plays into Earl Spence's hands. And that's probably why he's reluctant to take that fight. None of those veterans wants to take that fight. You know, they don't. If if Lamont Peterson was so anxious to fight um, Earl Spence, that fight wouldn't have to wait to December because Earl Spence had a fight date sometime this fall. It, it would happen in October or November. But, you know, I don't think he really wants to fight. You know, Lamont Peterson really ain't been committed to boxing in, in a minute. You know, he really ain't had a big fight in a minute since the Danny Garcia fight really been downhill for him and his career. And his inactivity is going to be his downfall versus anybody, you know. And, um, you know, these guys would rather just sit on the shelf and fight punk-ass fights than fight Earl Spence. And, and it's getting it's getting comical. It really is getting comical what they're doing to Earl Spence and how much they respect this young man who really ain't even been on the elite level. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. He got that Paul Williams aura on him, you know. Boogeyman of the welterweight division. He's gonna get to a point where you know people say, "Oh, they gotta fight him. They gotta fight him." It's, it's gonna, it's gonna be he gonna have to move up, or management and Al Hamer's gonna have to force Keith Thurman to fight him, or um, he just gonna have to he has to just stay busy, or somebody gonna have to lay the blueprint how to beat him, have a little success so people get courage to fight him. You know, it happened with Golovkin, it happened with Keith Thurman, it happened with Paul Williams. You know, it happens with all the boogeyman. You know, these these guys, these boxers today ain't man enough to find a blueprint for themselves. You know, they ain't man enough to put the right game plan together for themselves, for, for their opponent. And, um, you know, that's on that's on them. Really, it is, man. That all these guys want to wait for somebody else to put the blueprint out 
and have some success um, for 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 guys to show them how to beat a particular fighter instead of doing their homework in the gym and um, figuring it out, you know. But it is what it is, but this would be a good fight. Um, I would think Earl would beat the shit out of Lamont Pearson, knock him out. Um, but like I said, these guys ain't men no more, man. These ain't these ain't real thoroughbred boxers. These ain't throwback boxers. These throwback hideouts, you know. Lamont ain't trying to be fighting nobody. You know, if Danny Garcia said he wanted to she'd fight him. But, um, you know, it is what it is. It's your boy CJ Goodfella. We gone.